Welcome back to episode two of Cooking with Key. And if you want to find out how I cook this beautiful meal, stay tuned. Hey, what's good, YouTube? It's your girl, King Key. And as you can tell by my surroundings and what I'm wearing, we're back in the kitchen for episode two of Cooking with Key. So today we're going to make, as you saw in the beginning, some smothered pork chops and we're, with rice. And we're going to make um, pork and beans. So before we get started, I'm going to show you all the ingredients that you're going to need. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and show you all the things you need to prepare this meal. So first is you're going to need some pork chops. So I've already pre-washed mine. I don't remember the cut I have. I think it's pork loin. You can get whatever cut you like. When you're making smothered meat, I do recommend you try to get a cut with more fat because um, the meat comes out tender more tender in my opinion when you have more fat you're also going to need your um seasoning so i have some a half an onion that i need to use and it's small so of course i have another little onion and then uh, about a fourth or a third shall i say of bell green bell pepper you can use whatever seasonings you like if you don't like onions trust me you will not taste it as long as you cut it up small it will be fine if you don't like onions but you will need this to make your gravy Next, you're going to need some minced garlic. This is pretty optional. I don't always use it, but when I do have it, I do use it because garlic adds a lot of flavor to your food. Next, you're going to need some um, rice. You can use whatever kind of rice you like. I prefer jasmine rice, so I just have some jasmine rice. And then I have my pork and beans, which will be my side. Don't come for me because it's pork and beans. If y'all don't like pork, you shouldn't be watching this because clearly we're making pork chops. So... I love these though, especially to go with anything with pork and rice. And I'm going to show y'all how I prepare my pork and beans. Now I'm showing you all the seasonings I'm going to use. This is one of my like secret ingredients. It's called Zydeco Chop Chop. If you're not in Louisiana, you may not be able to get your hands on this. But if you can, definitely get it. It's just dehydrated seasonings. And it's amazing. It's produced in Opelousas, my hometown. So if you can find this, definitely get it. Next, I have onion powder, garlic powder because that's my business, cayenne pepper because we love the spice, Saint Amand because we love the spice, but we also need some flavor, and it has less salt, so it's not going to be salty, and then smoked paprika really just use this for color. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is season my pork chops. So I just have my camera kind of zoomed in. It's at a weird angle, but I want you guys to see exactly how much seasoning I'm putting. Just like eyeballing everything because I don't measure. So the first thing I like to add is my Saint Amand because this is the seasoning that has the salt. And I like to really see how much is going on to make sure I'm not making it salty. But you can put a lot. Especially since it's pork chops and they're huge, you can put a lot. So I just put about that much and I know you're probably looking at it saying that's too much, but it's not. Next, I like to add my cayenne pepper because I also like to know how much I'm putting of this. And if I add the smoked paprika first, they look the same color basically. So it's hard to tell. So you don't want to put too much cayenne pepper. Some of y'all probably look at saying it's too spicy, but I'm from Louisiana. This is definitely not going to be spicy. Next, I add my garlic powder. And literally, you can put as much or as little of this stuff as you like. It doesn't have salt in it, so it's not like your food will be salty if you put too much or whatever. You can't really put too much. I guess you probably can, but I've never experienced it. Now I'm adding onion powder over that. Then I'm just going to go in with my paprika. The brands that you use, I don't think really make a difference. I guess some cooks will probably tell you something different, but I'm going to let y'all know I use great value. I use whatever I can find at the store at the time. So it really don't matter the only thing that i'm really just anal about is the seasoning with the salt in it because some of them are too salty like if you use tony's you definitely don't want to use as much as i just use tony's is salty as heck and if you use tony's to season your food you have to like use it very lightly because the main ingredient is tony's is salt which a lot of them are but tony's is like extra salty y'all like taste your seasons before you put them on too that's another thing like literally just taste it on your hand before you put it on your meat 
Okay, sorry this angle is weird. And once again, my refrigerator is in the background, literally fucking having a whole conversation. So we gonna ignore that. But um, I'm gonna go ahead and get my pot ready. Another thing about making a gravy, because we are gonna be making a gravy, you have to have a good pot. So if you buy like the $30 pot sets from Walmart, that's cool for scrambling eggs and you know, ball and noodles, but you're not gonna get a good gravy with it. Your gravy will be watery, it'll be light, it won't come out thick, it won't have enough flavor because the thicker your gravy, the more flavor it's gonna have and it won't have the flavor that you're expecting because you're not using the right kind of pot. So I highly recommend you investing in an expensive pot getting one that's um you know it doesn't even have to be expensive because if you go to marshall's or tj maxx or ross you can find a good thick pot so like either a granite or stone pot or um a magnolite pot or even if you have a black pot like a cast iron a uh, dutch oven pot you can use that as well so oh my god my battery dying so we need to snap we need to speed this up so the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is get my skillet hot by adding a little bit of oil. My skillet is definitely a pot. I'm going to add a little bit of oil to it. Just that pot was like a tablespoon. And just let it start getting uh, warm in the pot before I add my meat. I'm going to come back when I add my meat because my battery's dying. Alright, so the process that I'm doing now is called browning your meat. And that's when you add a little bit of oil in the bottom of your pan and it starts to make that noise and you put your meat in and basically let it do exactly what it says brown on each side don't cook it for that long but it is going to start to stick a little bit and don't get afraid don't be scared as long as you don't see like actual black burnt marks you're fine so I'm just arranging it in my pot because my pot is not that big, like not that wide at the bottom. So I have to try to make room to fit every piece. That's another thing. You want all your pieces to actually touch the bottom of the pan. So I'm going to let it brown and then I'm going to come back when I'm ready to flip so y'all can see what it looks like when it's browning. Okay, while my meat is browning, I'm going to go ahead and prepare my rice. So I don't measure my rice at all. I just pour it until I think it's enough. And because I don't have that much left, I'm just gonna do the whole bag. So now you're gonna wash this rice and I'm gonna come back and show y'all my method to making sure I have enough water. Okay, we're back with my rice and I already washed it and added the water. Now let me show y'all how I know when I have enough water, even though I don't measure. So look at your finger. This is a trick my grandpa taught me and has never failed me. See that first line on your finger? Sit your finger in the rice, right on top of where the rice stops. Don't go into the rice, where, on top of where the rice stops. And the water should stop at the line, the first line on your finger, on your pointer finger. If the water stops there all over, then that means you have enough rice and your rice will be cooked perfectly. It always works every single time. I don't know the science behind it, it just works. Now if you want to measure, it's basically a one-to-one -one ratio. One cup of rice, one cup of water. I just want to show y'all, I hope you can hear me over the, you know, loud noise, but this is what your meat will look like when it's ready to flip. You see how it's turning brown and it has like that little edge, almost like it's crispy? That's when you're gonna flip it. So I'm just flipping all my meat. And I'm gonna let the other side get the same way. So I probably had it browning for about two minutes so let's all decide to get the same way and i'll come back when it's time to do the next step okay so it's been about two more minutes and the meat is brown on both sides now so i'm gonna go ahead and add all of my chopped seasoning just my onions and my bell pepper and i'm gonna add my garlic as, as well For my minced garlic, I usually just do a tablespoon or a tablespoon and a half, just depends on, you know, how much it looks like in the pot. Like I said, we don't really measure. Alright, now you're going to need a spoon 
and just let all of your onions and bell peppers touch the bottom and because your pot should be sticking about now, right about now the onion and bell pepper will create like a um almost like a liquid substance at the bottom to help your pot stop sticking and all you're gonna do is let those onions and bell pepper cook down until your onions are translucent once your onions turn translucent you're just gonna add water to your pot you're gonna turn your fire down a little bit and then you're gonna cover it so I will come back once my onions and bell peppers are cooked down and show y'all what it looks like and show y'all how much water I'm adding so my camera ends up dying but I still want to show you guys you know the rest of the video so we're just gonna switch camera so if the quality change so sorry about it but we just got to deal with it so I'm filming on my phone right now because I don't have any extra batteries I don't know what happened to them I lost them so this is what I was telling y'all about having a good pot before I added my seasonings everything was sticking to the pot but the seasonings make the pot get a little bit of uh, water in the bottom and then all of this is going to come up and be flavored so i know it may look burnt but don't worry it's gonna be flavored but it's not gonna taste burnt or anything like this so now that my onion is pretty much cooked down i'm gonna go ahead and add water so i just have this uh 16 ounce i believe this is 16 ounces i don't know glass of water and i'm just gonna pour to about right there right until like the sizzle stops and then all you're gonna do is use your spoon to scrape the bottom of the pot and get all of those flavors that are stuck on the bottom out using that water and your spoon so i turned my fire down to about a six and as you can see it has a little roll on it oops it has a little roll on it but it's a slow roll and now i'm gonna go ahead and add the secret ingredient i was telling you guys about which is my Zydeco Chop Chop. I like to add this once I add my water because the um, it's like the water rehydrates all of the seasonings that's been dehydrated. So I just add a little bit, not too much, and I'm gonna mix it in with the water and I'll come back when it's time to add more water. So all you're gonna do is put a top on this because the steam coming back is gonna help make your meat tender and you want your meat to be tender. So you put a top on this and uh, just let it slow roll and just keep an eye on it, check on it about every 10 minutes or so. Make sure it's not sticking or cooking all the way down. It will cook down fast, that water. Even though it seems like I put a lot of water, it will cook down fast in about seven to 10 minutes. Come back, stir it up. If your meat is not tender how you want it, add more water. Now that we got our food going, I'm going to go ahead and prepare my pork and beans. But for my pork and beans, I'm going to use two pans of pork and beans. I'm going to use some butter. I'm going to use a little bit of St. Amand. And I'm going to use brown sugar. So I'm going to go ahead and open up these cans and put them in my saucepan. Okay, to your pork and beans, you're going to add about two tablespoons of butter. A sprinkle of St. Amand. and two tablespoons of brown sugar. Then you're gonna put your pot on a really low heat depending on um, you know, how long your food has because of course you want this to be done when your food is done, which all you're doing is warming it up. So I'm just gonna put mine on about a two and I'm gonna stir in all the ingredients and then just it's just gonna cook. All right, so if you look at my water, it's pretty cooked down some parts doesn't have really any water and that gravy is thickening so i'm gonna go ahead and add more water and add the top back and let it continue to cook my meat i can already tell is getting tender but it's not exactly where i would like it to be so i'm gonna let it continue to cook So this is a weird angle because like I said, my camera's dead, so I can't hold it up on my ring light, but I'm just gonna, hold on, let me pull my ring light closer so you guys can see better. So I'm just gonna do a little taste test. So as you can see, my gravy is sitting on my rice, so we're gonna go ahead and taste it. It's 
so delicious okay spicy too let's taste the meat like butter melt in your mouth and of course the beans this is a match made in heaven so I just want to say thank you guys so much for tuning in for my second episode of Cooking with Key. Um, we got more to come. Let me know something that y'all want to see me cook next. Um, I'm probably going to do cabbage next or maybe uh, shrimp etouffee. I'm not sure. But let me know what you guys want to see next. And uh, if you made it all the way to the end of the video, thank you so much. I love you for all the support. Please comment down below. Again, like I said, what you want to see next. Follow me on Instagram and Snapchat. All that's going to be in the description box. And I'll definitely see you in the next one.